Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another beginner's colored pencil type video. So before I actually do a demonstration for you guys, I'm going to do a little bit of practice layering and blending. And I picked some very basic colors like yellow and orange and a really basic red and then a couple of greens, a brown and a black to do this because I thought that maybe some people that might be new to colored pencil might have a smaller set and not as many colors which is understandable so I thought I would use colors that any colored pencil set should have. As you can see I'm just practicing with one color in the first circle and these are really badly drawn circles so I apologize for that but I am just kind of showing how you can do a darker value to a lighter value and by the way if you like these types of exercises I have two beginners colored pencil videos that do have like exercises that are similar to these ones that I'm doing before the actual demonstration so I'll link those so that you could check them out. And then in the second circle, I'm practicing with two colors. I'm using a really simple, the same orange color from before. And then I'm going to actually layer a red color on top to get more of like a red orange color. And it really shows you how blendable these colored pencils are. I'm using Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. You can use whichever set that you actually have. So if you have Prismacolors, that's totally fine to use as well. I'm using Polychromos and also they have like a little bit of a harder lead than the Prismacolors do. So the Prismacolors kind of blend even faster in my opinion than the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. So if you are using Prismacolor, you might have an even easier time doing these blending exercises. You can see I've gotten a really pretty red-orange color just from blending the orange and the red on top of each other multiple times and that's how I got that effect. Of course I was a little bit darker on the bottom. Then in the third circle I decided to just use yellow and then red. So those are two kind of uh, drastically different colors so there's no mid-tone that I can use and I wanted to just kind of create that orange with the red and the yellow together rather than actually using an orange color. It's kind of good to do practices like this as well because you really learn how to create a soft blend and how gentle you need to be to transition from one color to the next. So I do recommend doing that and I was able to achieve kind of an orange mid-tone that you can see as I start to build this up. What I like to do is layer the lighter color on top of everything. So that's what I'm doing right now is taking the yellow and layering it on top of everything after I've kind of blended a little bit just so that I start to create more of an orange mid-tone. And I do like how this one turned out. It kind of looks like the sun actually or some kind of very hot star. If you're new to colored pencils, I really recommend trying this, especially if you have limited colors, you don't have that many colors that you can blend, definitely try this, it's a really good exercise. But anyways, I'm moving on to the fourth very badly drawn circle, sorry I apologize for that again, I just traced them on from like a bottle or something like that. But anyways, when I do a three color blend, I like to start with my two lighter colors, so I'm merging the yellow color into the lighter green, and kind of getting more of like a lime greenish color that's kind of what I see here and then I'm going to go in with my darker green which is my shadow color and of course try to carefully blend that into my lighter colors and then of course I'm going to darken up the dark green color as dark as I can get it to get a really deep tone but it really helps to first layer that yellow and that lighter green so that you have more of like undertones so when you add the darker green on top it's already kind of a deep color and it looks really really nice and I'm leaving a pretty intense highlight on the right side as well. And then I'm just going to practice blending and blending that green or the dark green into the light green into the yellow into kind of more of a very light yellow slash white color. And of course I'm blending it a different way as I blended the as I blended the third circle which the highlight was at the top. I just wanted to switch things up and make it more interesting. I don't know if that worked but I went pretty dark with the dark green and then I'm just going to kind of blend it out with the light green. You also notice I'm kind of coloring in the direction of the curve too because it's a circle so I'm kind of coloring in that way um, and sometimes when you're coloring in a circle you'll kind of color in a curve motion like this as well because that's kind of how the shadows and highlights on a circle look and I have other videos where I'm practicing and I'm using like a square as a demonstration and I don't do the same thing so I just wanted to point that out. You can kind of practice with different shapes of coloring if you use circles. 
so that is a good tip as well. And I was able to achieve a pretty good lime green color there, I think, in the fourth circle. And then I move on to the last circle where I kind of just wanted to blend everything together and see how it would all look together. So I'm going from a dark green all the way to a red. And I have a yellow in between and I'm gonna kind of get an orange color in between and a lighter green and everything like that. But I just wanted to see how all my colors look together. Kind of fun exercise to do if you're planning on using colors together. You just wanna see how they look next to each other and practice a little bit of blending as well. You can also see how the colors interact with each other. So there are some areas, not yet, but there are gonna be some areas where I layer the green and the red together a little bit and then they kind of become muddy and you can see that you kind of don't want that effect all the time. So it's good to kind of play around with your colors and make sure that when you layer some of them together, you're not getting a muddy effect. Know which colors you can layer and which colors you shouldn't layer. Now this green that I used was not, like it's a normal dark green, but it's not the most typical dark green. I think this had a little bit of like a blue tone to it. It almost looks like more of a peacock green color, if you know what I mean. But anyway, if you're using a different shade of green, it might look a little bit different. And my red is kind of a red-orange tone, so of course some reds have different tones. Some have more of like a pink tone. So you really have to just practice with what you have. And you can see I'm just kind of uh, mixing the colors together. You could see a little bit of orange that I got from layering the red and the yellow and then a little bit of the light green as well from layering the yellow and the dark green. You can see where some of the red and the dark green merged and created a kind of muddy color towards the sides. So now that I have kind of done that by accident, I can see that those areas I need to be careful of when I am actually doing my demonstration drawing, which is going to be a very colorful pair, by the way, if you were wondering what it was. This isn't a perfect blend either, obviously, and it's kind of messy and everything, but it is kind of fun to play around with the colors that you're using. Then I went in with a brown to see how brown would look on top of this and if it would be okay to do details in brown. I think the brown showed up pretty well, but I would probably make um, my pencil a little bit sharper to get finer details. You can kind of see the pair now, well, just a little bit, but before I actually start the pair, I just want to practice a little bit with my brown tone as well. And what I'm gonna do is, since I don't have a dark brown, I'm kind of using a very basic set of colors. I've swatched them and you can see exactly which colors I'm using from the Faber-Castell Polychromo set, but I don't have a dark brown in this um, kind of swatch that I did, so I decided to make my own dark brown by layering brown and then a little bit of black, and then brown, of course, on top again, and seeing how that looks. So when you are trying to create something like a dark brown tone and you want to use black to help you, you have to be careful. You don't want to add too much black and you want to make sure you have plenty of layers of the brown tone as well and not as many layers as the black because you don't want anything to look too flat or too dark. But I was able to achieve kind of um, an umber looking tone with that. And then I decided to try and create more of like a brownish red tone as well, so more like a burnt color, and I went in with my red, which is kind of more of a reddish orange as you can tell, and then my brown and practiced a little bit with that. It's always good to do that as well, but really with colored pencils, it's kind of endless the possibilities that you can blend just with a few different colors. You can see I've already got a very reddish brown tone and more of a, of a burnt umber tone as well, just by using two pencils to blend together. I guess it also helps that this brown tone is burnt sienna. There's already a little bit of that undertone in it that helps to go with the red, but I was still able to create a different kind of brown while I mixed it with the black, so that's good too. It's very diverse. And then in the last circle, I just practiced a little bit more with creating that limeish green tone with my yellow, my light green, and then I kind of transitioned into a few different colors. I think I did an orange on top, a hint of red, and dark green at the bottom and tried to create more of a subtle transition. And again, I'm just kind of practicing and playing around here and showing you some exercises that you might want to do before you actually jump into a drawing. If you are new to colored pencils or you struggle with using colored pencils, these are very helpful things to do. Now we can finally get to the pair and I apologize, I erased it with my kneaded eraser. I always do that before I start, but you can't really completely see the outline here, so I'm sorry about that, but it'll start being more defined as I color it in. I like to start with my lightest color, which is yellow, and I kind of cover the whole pair besides the highlights, 
with the yellow because I just wanted to create a nice undertone of that yellow color. And then I went in and started adding some green to achieve that lime green sort of effect. And notice I'm coloring very lightly in my beginning layers. It's super, super light. I'm not creating any super defined edges. It almost looks like my camera is out of focus with this, but it's actually just that the layers are so light at first. So I'm sorry if it's a little bit hard to see at this stage. I actually went in with my dark green and started to define a little bit at the bottom. That's obviously where the shadow is going to be in the end. And I kind of like to mark in where my shadows are going to be, especially the darkest ones. If you're new to colored pencils, I definitely recommend trying and coloring with the side of the pencil more um, and using a lighter hand and that way you don't get too many harsh little like edges in the drawing or any kind of hard lines because it's kind of hard to avoid those if you're just coloring with hard pressure in the tip of your pencil. I'm using pretty light pressure here, kind of coloring in either circular motions, like smaller circular motions or wider ones, it doesn't really matter, and trying to blend the colors together. Kind of towards the bottom I've colored in a more linear way with the darker green as you can see the lines going in one direction. So kind of practice and vary your techniques with the method that you color as well because that kind of makes a difference in the long run too. And it's super, super light still, but I'm starting to define some areas. There were some areas like spots on the pear that were a bit discolored and more like red. And so I started to define some of those areas and there were even some brown areas on the pear as well. And I was being really careful with the brown. I don't want to accidentally make it too, too dark throughout everything because the pear is gonna end up looking rotten and I don't want that to happen. I don't mean to make this too complicated by using so many colors to color in this pear, but I kind of like doing something colorful as a demonstration rather than just using like two colors or three colors because I think it helps to practice more, see how the colors interact together. It's a little bit more fun as well, so that's why I'm doing a really, really colorful demonstration in case you were wondering. Um, it really took me a lot of layers though to kind of get everything to blend together. That darker green color, I actually started to layer a little bit of brown and I didn't do that in the practice, which I should have the practice circles that I did, but I can kind of get more of a foresty green color by doing that. And that's why it is important to kind of practice with your pencils before, see what tones you can get. I got a foresty green color that was kind of the tone that I wanted. So I started to add some more brown very lightly to my dark green areas. I even layered a little bit with my red, so you'll see that a little bit later too. Towards the top of the pair, I'm just working on merging the red with the orange and the light green and everything, and I was trying to achieve that lime green tone, of course, without using a lime green, so I had to use my yellow and my light green and kind of layer that a lot in order to get that effect as well. And I will go in and work on the highlights too. I'm not just gonna leave them super white like that, but right now I'm focusing on building up the other areas of the pear, the shadows, and kind of just layering all the colors together. If your lines are showing through and things are starting to look too linear and your pencil strokes are showing through, try coloring more in circular motions or using the side of your pencil more rather than the tip of your pencil and that can really help with that. So that's something I used to struggle with is always having like too many pencil strokes. Sometimes you can't completely get rid of all the pencil strokes, but it helps to kind of use different methods of coloring and practice with them. Also keep your pencil nice and sharp to avoid grain. Especially if you're using Prismacolor or other wax-based pencils, they get blunt pretty quickly. This part's a little bit tricky. I'm trying to kind of darken up some of the areas without making it too harsh. I actually went in with my eraser because I added too much red. I'm just using my white eraser for that. And I had to pick up some of the pigment, so don't be afraid sometimes to erase. And you can use a white eraser to lift up colored pencil. Of course, it's not going to work as well as graphite, so colored pencil doesn't completely erase usually. But you can get some of the pigment off if you add too much. And I started to add some more brown at the bottom of the pear for the shadow, which of course I had to heavily blend with the dark green to make sure that the brown was not too, too dark. Right now it looks a little bit dark because I haven't added in all the shadows. This picture of the pear actually did have a lot of brown spots towards the middle of the pear and then going down towards the shadow, so I'm going to kind of start to add those ones in as well. 
While I'm using my brown tone though, I like to layer other colors on top to make sure that it's not too brown and doesn't dull out my drawing too much. It's really hard when you're drawing something like a fruit and there's a little bit of like brown spot somewhere on the fruit because you don't want to dull it out too much but those brown spots exist so you kind of have to acknowledge them. So it's a good idea to practice with your brown and layering and see how things go but so far everything's been okay with my burnt sienna color. I love using burnt sienna and it's blended really well. I've just kind of used my red and my orange to blend it out a little bit so that it's not too harsh, doesn't take over the drawing too much. Another thing is it was a little bit difficult to kind of darken up that green at the bottom because it's not the darkest shade of green so I did have to use my brown to kind of get that shadow going. I would advise not using black if you're trying to get a subtle shadow somewhere. I mean you can use it sometimes like I'm going to use it at the bottom of the pair but if you're trying to do a subtle shadow using black might really make things a little bit too too dark and too flat. So brown is kind of the way to go, kind of just layer the brown with other colors. Um, obviously I am using a limited color palette for this demonstration, so if you have more colors that you want to use, of course you can do that. But I just want to cater to people who also don't have a ton of colors to use, or maybe they're just intimidated by using a lot of colors, because I know I was, and when I first started with colored pencils I decided to jump into a portrait and she ended up orange. So while I've built up a lot of areas on the pair so far, there's a couple problem areas. First of all the highlights, second of all the right side is a little bit neglected. It's just kind of this light lime green color without very many shadows, so I do need to work on that as well. So the way that I like to kind of make my highlights look more natural is by making them a little bit more uneven. So the right side highlight, I actually added a bit of yellow in the middle of the highlight and kind of made it have more of an organic shape and a little bit of an uneven edge. And I actually didn't leave too many of the areas pure white. I actually glazed that uh, light yellow over it a little bit to kind of, you know, make it look a little bit more natural. And then some areas were a little bit darker than other areas, as you can see, to kind of just give the highlight a more realistic look. On the left side, I did the same thing, but with the oranges and the reds too, I kind of wanted to make them a little bit more realistic looking and I didn't want to just leave a blank white highlight. So you definitely want to pay attention to that as well. Don't leave just a completely blank white highlight with a perfect circle shape because that's not going to be realistic either. At this rate, the colors have been built up pretty nicely. I've also avoided creating any harsh edges on the outside of the pair. Definitely avoid creating harsh edges. They never look realistic and you just want to avoid that if you're going for a realistic look. So I've blended softly against the edges and never created any harsh lines or anything like that. And I am just kind of layering more colors at this stage. You can see the right side has been a little bit more developed. I've added some more shadows and things like that in orange so that it wasn't as light as it was before because before it did not match the rest of the pair. So it kind of helps to take a step back and make sure your drawing kind of matches. Now if you notice I also have a teeny bit of brown at the very top of the pair where the stem comes out of because there is a little bit of brown there. And then I have the brown at the bottom of the pair where the shadow is as well. Now I'm adding a little bit of black to even further deepen the shadow and when I add black I want to make sure I layer brown on top of it again to make sure it's not too too dark. And then I have to do the actual um, cast shadow I think it's called underneath the pair. So I'm doing that with black and a little bit of brown too and that's going to be of course the more dark shadow that kind of fades into a gray. So I kind of just did that a little bit quickly and then I moved on to the stem which I used the light brown and the, I was going to say the light brown and the dark brown but it's uh, light brown and the black to make the dark brown and I kind of just filled in that area. To create the stem I of course layered the brown and the black together to get the darkest areas and I left a little bit of areas for highlights as well and then I really darkened up some of those dark areas almost to the point where the stem looks a little bit too dark and maybe I shouldn't have darkened it up that much in comparison to the pear but that's okay. Now there is one last thing though that I want to do with this before I finish it and that is to create some details on the pear, some little dots like speckles actually. I'm sharpening my brown pencil a lot, that burnt sienna, very very sharp 
to do this and I started to kind of just very carefully create some speckles across the pair and then a couple of them I varied them with size and stuff like that but I really kind of wanted the detail to be pretty fine and not like how I did that in the practice because those were way too big so I wanted to make them smaller I even used the green a little bit in some areas to help incorporate the green into the greener areas of the pair and I think it looks pretty cool once I added those details and also there were some of those brown speckles on the highlight as well so don't be afraid to add details to the highlights if you see them there. And then I'm just going to sign it which is my favorite part of course and I hope that this was a helpful demonstration for any of you who might be new to colored pencils. When you're new I really do recommend trying to use a couple different varying colors and see how they all work together and see how you use them together because when you move on to bigger drawings of course you're going to be using a lot of colors so it helps to have like reds and greens and different things that you're practicing with. And that's all for this video so thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment and let me know what you thought of it or if you tried it or anything that you have to say about this. Hopefully this demonstration and everything was helpful to you guys. And again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!